So, Steve, there is something called dualism, mm -hmm. which has to do with whether or not our brain is the, you know, the sole creator of our reality or if there's something perhaps metaphysical that our brain is communicating with. So what is this? Yeah, so the, the, the question is, is the mind entirely a manifestation of the brain or do we have to invoke something other than just brain cells firing and communicating with each other in order to explain our subjective experience, our consciousness, our, consciousness, our okay. minds. So a dualism is the philosophical position that consciousness has a dual cause, two causes, right? The brain and something else. Mm -hmm. But that, that something else could be many different things depending on the flavor of dualism that you follow. But the most common type you know, you'll, you'll encounter is what we call Cartesian dualism from Rene Descartes. You know, the idea that there's something spiritual, metaphysical, a spirit, a soul, whatever, and that that's our consciousness. And our consciousness is really separate from our physical body, although it communicates to the physical realm through the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, there's what philosophers call property dualism, which says that the uh, the brain is entirely responsible for the mind, but but the mind and consciousness requires some physical phenomenon that we currently do not understand. Like our current understanding of how the brain works is inadequate. Mm -hmm. That there's something else going on, and some something fundamental about the universe, like a new force or something, uh, and that just electromagnetism, you know, isn't enough to explain consciousness. So that's dualism in a nutshell. All right. So, but but first. Is from a neurologist's perspective, do we know enough about the brain to understand that consciousness is created by the brain? Absolutely. So, and we don't have to understand everything about consciousness, you know, neurological consciousness, in order to say that, right? We don't have to be able to replicate it or explain it down to the single neuron level or have a complete understanding of every circuit in the brain and how they all interact. Obviously, it's ridiculously complicated and and we still have a lot to learn about how the brain works and how it creates consciousness, et cetera. But if we just ask the more basic question, does the brain cause consciousness? Everything that we've observed so far is completely consistent with that and follows what you would predict you know, from the neuroscience hypothesis, the notion that the brain completely creates consciousness. I mean, we do know that if you have a stroke in a part of your yeah. brain or if you cut into the brain that you lose functionality. Yeah, the correlation is tight, right? If if you're asleep, your brain's asleep, right? If I give you a drug that is designed to put your brain asleep, you go to sleep. If I damage part of your brain, I damage part of your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in an altered state of conscious, your brain is in an altered state of functioning. When your brain dies, you know, there's no evidence that you continue to live, you know, to experience your conscious beyond that point. Now, of course, people will often point to things like reincarnation or ESP uh, or life after death or whatever as evidence for dualism, but none of those are well established, right? Mm -hmm. Those are all controversial. I don't think any of them are true, but at the very least, you cannot use that as a premise because it's not itself established. You're basically using one questionable idea in order to support another questionable idea, but none of it rests on bedrock, right? There's no solid foundation for any of it. Every, the, the solid scientific evidence is that, yeah, the mind is basically what the brain does, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the more we learn about neuroscience, the, the neuroscience hypothesis, right, the notion that the mind is entirely a phenomenon of the brain uh, is holding up really well. And that, that theory has a lot of explanatory power and a lot of predictive power in terms of you know, any research that we've done looking at the, how the mind works, how the brain works, et cetera. So, so far, it's holding up really well. Well, and to make this point perfectly clear, um, from what I've read and from talking to you, the idea that there's anything metaphysical about the brain, um, it has zero proof. There is nothing mm -hmm. that they could say, well, and here's a little bit of evidence that we have that the brain is communicating to something or whatever. It's yeah. just, right there, it's a steel door. There is no information about any of that stuff. Right. There's, there's nothing that... Now, if we did have a phenomenon that was, appeared to be outside the laws of physics or outside the functioning of the brain, we would have at least a mystery. It wouldn't necessarily mean we'd know what the answer to that mystery is, but it would be at least something that we can't explain. But there's nothing like that. There's absolutely nothing like that. 
Um, so the, the worst thing about the dualism hypothesis, in my opinion, is not that it's wrong. It's that it's unnecessary, mm -hmm. right? So I, my favorite analogy is the, uh, the light fairy. So let's say, you know, when you flip a switch to turn on a light in your house, right? You close the circuit. The, that allows the electricity to flow to the light bulb, which then the resistance in, that, in the light bulb causes it to, to create light and it uses up electrical power, mm -hmm. right? That completely explains the phenomenon of flipping on a switch and the light goes on, right? Right. But somebody might say, well, I think that there's a, a light bulb fairy, and when you turn on the switch, that opens up a, the circuit, but that just is a signal to the fairy who comes in and then feeds off the electricity and, and turns on the light and feeds into the light. Mm. So you can't prove that that's not true, right? You can't prove that there is no light bulb fairy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's correct. I can't prove there's no light bulb fairy, but it's just a completely unnecessary hypothesis. Mm -hmm. The system works entirely well without the fairy. Right, we can it prove... It adds nothing. It's just this detour through a completely unnecessary magical intru intrusion right. onto the a physical explanation for the light bulb. But most importantly, though, what we can prove, though, is the light bulb turns on with normal physics operating yeah. normally, right? We're not... We're not uh, but again, yeah, so, it, so the, the light, the electricity hypothesis works just fine. Uh, and every prediction you would make from that, you know, in terms of opening and closing a circuit and using electricity and all that, you could measure the wattage and it all works out, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can still, if you wanted to, insert the light bulb fairy and it's still consistent with all of that evidence. It's just a completely unnecessary addition. So the brain is the same thing. It's just a lot more complicated. So we could say... And people d will, d you know, make these uh, hypotheses, which are an attempt at explaining why all of the evidence point towards the brain being the mind, right? They um, will say things like, well, maybe the brain is just the communicator to the, the mind, right? It's, this, it's receiving the signal the same way the light bulb is receiving the light from the fairy, right? But it's not the generator of it. It's like, well... That's an un first of all, you know that's I don't I don't think that's a con that's consistent with the evidence. But if you you know jury rig it enough so that it is, it just is an unnecessary addition. We mm -hmm. don't need to add this external source of intelligence. But to me, if that falls apart, the the brain as communicator hypothesis, because it's like saying that the TV is not the source of the information, it's just receiving the signal. Well, well it's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, but think about a TV. You can change the channel, and, and you could decide. You could turn up the volume, and you could maybe affect the color and stuff. But you can't affect what the people in the sitcom are doing right. at the TV end. That is locked, right? That's mm -hmm. you cannot affect it from the end of the TV because it is just receiving a signal. But we can change everything about how the brain behaves from the brain end. Right. So if you're trying to use the brain as receiver hypothesis, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't explain the evidence. Right. It's, it, in fact, the evidence disproves the, the brain as receiver hypothesis. So, you know, the dualism, in my opinion, ranges from either disproven to beyond evidence and entirely unnecessary mm -hmm. until we get to the point where we have a, a genuine mystery that neuroscience um, is not compatible with. Right. Not, so that's different from saying it, it can thoroughly explain it we can't explain we can't explain everything about anything right but so far it is complete it is adequate to account for all the evidence that we have we don't need to introduce any new hypotheses so occam's razor slices it away it sounds to me like you know people are trying to add something magical to to in, in essence back up other beliefs that they sure. have sure Right. Yeah, I think that's correct. Like, there's no reason why you would come to a dualist conclusion if you didn't already have the mes metaphysics, right? If you didn't mm -hmm. already believe in spirituality or something like that, an immortal soul. If you were coming at this without any preconceived notions, there's no, absolutely no reason why you would introduce this idea of dualism, of something outside the brain. You would never do it, right? It's like if you didn't have preconceived notions about Bigfoot, like you would never introduce that idea based upon, you know, anything that's happening. It's like you have to have that preconceived notion in order to, you know, to try to fit that into into evidence or observation. So it's the same thing. It's it, 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 the belief comes first. It, it's not a theory that derives from observation or the evidence or any any need, any logic. It's just trying to shoehorn belief into the existing evidence, despite the fact that the evidence 
is progressing in such a way that it's increasingly reinforcing the neuroscience model, the fact that the brain is what causes the mind and consciousness. So you believe in soloism? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I th yeah, soloism. I think there's a term for it. I'm forgetting what it is, but mon monism, I guess. Monism. monism. Yeah, but yeah, not dualism. There's, you know, I, I think the neuro, the neuroscience hypothesis is all that we need, and until that craps out, there's no reason to try to add anything else.